In true sore loser fashion, Nicola Sturgeon announced the second ever, the second ever, once in a lifetime Scottish independence referendum. They're aiming to host the new vote as soon as 2023. So here's the deal, OK? Scotland is stronger within the union in terms of global relevance and economic strength. We share a deep, rich history of the UK's separate nations supporting one another, leaning on each other. So what's the point in going? Scotland has been ravaged by, harshly, very much, by, by Chairman Sturgeon, treating the Highlands like her own personal Covid gulag. So instead of fixing the mess, she and her merry band of nationalists, of course, little Nicky, the world's best Elton John impersonator, has decided to blame England for all of her problems. The Scottish Conservative leader, Douglas Ross, said that the First Minister's priorities were, quote, all wrong, and she should instead focus on issues such as COVID recovery, closing the attainment gap. Oh, I don't know, maybe the fact that basically Scotland's got one of the Europe's worst ever drug and drink problems and all of the stuff that's going on over there. But that, to me, makes a lot more sense than trying to make a reasonable argument as to why all local businesses should flock to London. Joining me now is Scottish Conservative MSP Murdo Fraser. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Now, look, Murdo, forgive me. I'm starting to wonder whether or not the rest of the UK should vote to leave Scotland. I think if you look at the performance of certain SNP politicians like Ian Blackford in the House of Commons, they seem to be designed to rile up people uh, across the rest of the UK to such an extent that they say, take Take these people away from us, because we've had enough of seeing them in Westminster. But I think in a more hard-headed analysis, people will see if Scotland leaves the UK, uh, we lose uh, roughly uh, a third of the landmass of Great Britain, probably around half of our territorial waters. We lose the magnificent resource that is uh, Scottish fishing waters. We lose uh, the opportunities from uh, North Sea oil and gas, still there despite Nicola Sturgeon's best efforts. We lose the uh, potential for renewable energy uh, from Scotland's uh, coasts uh, and in the North Sea and, and the Atlantic. We lose access to barrier-free trade for Scotch whisky and Scotch salmon, all these fantastic uh, exports. The opportunity to study at some of the world's greatest universities uh, in Scotland and the joy of having uh, Scots uh, as part of the British uh, nation. Why would you want to throw that away? No, I understand. Although, I mean, I must say that some of the joy of having Scots as part of our nation occasionally is a bit lost to me. When I drive down that motorway or up that motorway, I must say, and there's a lot of people there with the flags, I thought they were giving me a big hello and I started waving at them and flashing my... And then I just got the finger by a lot of them and I thought, oh, OK, fair enough. But, no, honestly, sure you know, I, just wanna, I, want, I, want to, I want to nail my colours to the mask. I am desperate for Scotland not to leave, OK? I, I really am desperate. I'm, I, I think it would be a crying shame for all of the reasons that you've just outlined there and also just because I don't want it. And I think... And not just that as well. For, for all joking aside and national jesting and national jousting, as it were, Scotland, I think, is a beautiful place. I love the Scottish people and I think it would be a tremendous loss to the rest of the UK if Scotland did decide to leave. But Nicola Sturgeon is doing her best to make it happen, isn't she? I mean, could, could she... Could she actually run that country on her own? Like, if, she, if we voted for it tomorrow, if they voted for it tomorrow, what would that be like? Would it work? I, th I think it would be chaos. I mean, first thing to say about this is, you know, everybody's talking about a relaunch of the independence campaign. It's never gone away. Uh, in every year since 2016, we've had a launch of a new referendum campaign. Uh, you know, it, it's like Groundhog Day in Scotland. Uh, you know, every year, once more, we have, have a referendum campaign launched. We are promised a referendum will take place within 18 months, and it never, of course, happens. If we want to see what an independent Scotland would be like, we only have to look at the track record of the SNP, who've now been in power in Scotland for the last 15 years. And what have we seen? The Scottish economy is going backwards. Uh, we see education in Scotland, once regarded as among the best in the world, slipping down the international league tables, huge problems in our NHS, the worst drug deaths in Europe under the SNP's watch, infrastructure failing, uh, two new ferries on which we've spent £250 million now may never actually land up in the water. A whole host of issues where the SNP, using the limited powers they have under devolution, have failed Scotland. Why would you trust these people with even more power? Uh, the experience yeah. of them in government tells us it would be an absolute disaster. And that's not to take account of the fact you'd be yeah. creating a hard border between Scotland and England. Yeah. So you think Brexit's bad, independence would be 10 times yeah, worse. Can, can, um, I, 
Can I just say, sorry, because we're running out of time here, Meadow, but can I just say, there's a couple of things here that really mean uh, uh, a lot to me on this particular issue, right? The first thing is, of course, actually, the calibre of, uh, of, of the Scottish uh, leadership, I suppose, really. And I look at people like Alan Smith, OK, who is, of course, a member of, member of Parliament. He's, he's born in Glasgow, this guy. As far as I can tell, the best thing about him is the fact that he can move one of his eyebrows and that just stays up there the whole time, like some kind of creepy weirdo, OK? But, actually, the idea that he would be in charge of running my bath, let alone my constituency, is absolutely terrifying. But can I just put something to you? I think a lot of members of the Scottish National Party are actually quite nasty pieces of work. And potentially, dare I say, Alan Smith is one of them, actually. I've seen this guy in action numerous times. And actually, I found him to be quite a bully. And I have found his views on things like women, for example, pretty, pretty squiffy. There's been news reports as well of various things that he's maybe perhaps uh, said in the past, his views on things about the amount of disabled people or ethnic minorities there should be. But because he wraps himself in the Scottish flag, and he brands himself a Scottish nationalist. And nationalism, of course, north of the border, Murdo, is fine, isn't it? You can be a nationalist north of the border, they get away with it. But actually, not only do I not think they're good enough, I think in the case of people like Alan Smith, I think they're also quite nasty. Well, I wouldn't want to get too personal, Patrick, but I think you've got to cast your mind back to Scotland's former First Minister, uh, Alex Salmond. Now, Alex Salmond went on trial in a Scottish court, what, two years ago, on 13 charges of... Um, sexual harassment and abuse of women, including one charge of attempted rape, on which he was in due course found not proven, and the other charges were, of course, not guilty. But if that had been a former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom on, on trial for all those charges, it would be wall-to-wall -wall coverage for years to come. People would regard it as extraordinary. And yet in Scotland, the current SNP leadership treat Alex Allen as if he never existed. He's been totally airbrushed from the history of the SNP. So I, I think uh, you know, it's very convenient for the SNP to try and hide their demons away. I think people in Scotland look at them uh, and look at what might have happened had Scotland voted for independence in 2014 yeah. uh, with Alex Salmon as the prime minister of an independent country well, and they roll their eyes at that thought. Yeah. Exactly. It's right. Look, look, it's worth noting it was a quiz of all charges, but I do take your point. Uh, MSP, Conservative MSP, Murdo Fraser, there. thank you very much. I think this might be the first time we've spoken on this show. It won't be the last, I hope. Very good stuff. Very quickly, bring the panel back in. You guys have already had any heavy, heavy lifting to do so far. Francine, I'll bring you back in. Uh, do you care about Scotland? Well, look, I love Scotland. As a, you know, I've been there many times, seen lots of corporates there. I, love, I do like Scottish people, uh, but when, I when do you... feel... If they want to leave the UK, get on with let it. them go. Get on with it. Let them go. Now, when you say you do a lot of corporates there, because some people may not be aware, you, you do impressions, don't you? I do. I do. That's what I'm known can, for. Can we get a Katie Price? Oh, wow. <laughs> Never <laughs> underestimate the price. I'm actually loving it here tonight. <laughs> oh, yes. What do you think? <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> now, of course, people might be watching a different channel right now, in which case, shame on you. But maybe uh -huh. on that channel, you might see someone called uh, Sharon Osbourne. But if Sharon Osbourne wants some views, you can do her impression here, can't you? You know what, Mrs. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Aussie should be running this country, Patrick, cos we're fabulous <laughs> darlings. Oh. I just want to say as well, t t somebody's <laughs> coming onto the Mount Doran show has been in Coronation Street for what time. <laughs> oh, fantastic, <laughs> lovely stuff. You'd love to see it. <laughs> right, and you do impressions as well, don't you? No, I'm joking, oh. no, I'm only joking, oh, no, I'm only no, joking. No. But seriously, what do you think about the Scottish issue? Should we just biff them off? Well, Francine just said then if they want to go, they want to go. There's no evidence they want to go, Patrick. It was only eight years ago we had this once-in-a-lifetime, once-in-a-generation uh, referendum, and it came up 55 0.7% of Scots said they yeah. want to stay. Now, if we just say, look, let them go, well, you know, there's the vast majority yeah. of people, or the, ma the majority certainly of people want to stay, so I think we're, lo we're losing a bit of loyalty to I them. I agree. But having said that, you know, I don't think there needs to be another referendum. Yeah. The, the, the SNP is almost a single-issue party when yeah. there are far bigger problems going on in that country now that needs to be addressed by her. No, I agree. And this is the thing, I want to make one thing very clear, as, I, as I've already said tonight. I would hate to see Scotland go. I love the Scots. I think it's a fabulously beautiful country. I used to live up in the Lake District. It's the only place I've ever been in the UK that's come anywhere close, in fact, beaten, really, if I'm being honest with you. No. The beauty of the Lake District has been Scotland. I, 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 and, I, and I absolutely love it. My best friend lives in Scotland. Some of my best friends are Scottish. No, seriously. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, I, I would hate to see it go. Uh, but, but at the end of the day, you know, if it keeps going on and on and on, this stuff, Part of me thinks, well, well, let him have it. Well, but yeah, yeah, but there's, there's, there's still no evidence that it's, that it's tipped over that critical mass no. that would persuade Scotland to actually leave. I think it'd be a huge thing to do, huge, hugely damaging. Absolutely thing to do. right.